One, two, three. Choosing rugby early days was probably a, a lot from my father. This is the worst haircut I've ever seen. We're just going to have to surf to, to put a sock in there. It's a memory that won't go away anytime soon. Yeah, so I first got into rugby when I was um, when I was about four. Uh, Matthew Flinders Anglican College School on the Sunshine Coast in Budrum. There, that's uh, where I played in prep. Rugby's not too big on the Sunshine Coast, but a couple of the schools there um, played, and I was at that school for eight years till I moved to Brisbane. Um, from there, I was at Brisbane for for two years, and then finished up at Sunshine Coast Grammar School um, from grade nine to twelve. So that's that was uh, my early journey. And then this man, he's been brilliant. He's been fantastic this afternoon. Pace, awareness. Choosing rugby early days was probably a lot from my father. Um, he played up at Harvey Bay um, and, and Bundaberg quite a bit. And I think a lot of that had to do with probably the success of the Wallabies back in the day as well. So for me, uh, I can't tell you why I picked rugby, but I, um, I, I loved it. Um, I was obviously with my mates there at school and um, you know it was really good fun. Position-wise, he was on the wing. He didn't know how to pass the ball, but he could run. So that's usually what you do with people like that. Um, and yeah, I think he was a popular member of the side, but uh, probably not for his ability, I think, on the field. My old man probably wasn't the best passer, but early days I probably didn't know how to pass the ball either, so I took after him. Um, I played a lot of fullback and, and fly half yeah, when I was young, and then um, I guess as I started to uh, not grow as much as everyone else, I kind of moved into that halfback role where you didn't have to do too much tackling. So. Um, from there I found that position that I really enjoyed and, and I probably had to work pretty hard on the passing side as well. That's my point of difference, finding those um, little chinks in the, in the armour. So um, yeah, mate, it's, it's what I pride myself about and I'm you know, always going to do that whenever I run out there regardless of what side I'm in. I grew up in a place called Majimba, so whenever I get a day off from the Reds, um, I'm straight up, straight up the highway, straight up the Bruce. Um, I get home and just put the feet up. Um, it's a pretty special place, Majimba. Not too many people really know about it, but I spent a lot of time in the salt water as a kid, um, whether that was nippers or surfing. So that's probably on the agenda. If I if I get a bit of time off, I'm I'm looking to get the board out it, it, or just jumping in the water. Um, it's it's awesome just to get away from footy and you know do it quite a bit. Yeah, I guess surfing probably came a little bit later. Um, early, early days for me growing up by the beach was, was a lot of surf life saving. That kind of changed. Uh, there was an incident maybe 2011, 2012 where I lost a good mate of mine at, uh, at the Australian Surf Titles. I loved the beach, but that kind of put me off surf life saving a little bit. So I moved towards surfing and um, my old man is he loves it. He doesn't shut up about it. Me and my brother probably put up with that for about eight years of oh, we're just going to have to surf to, to put a sock in it. For me to get home, I'm only really there very short time a year, particularly with the Wallaby schedule. So um, I just pick it up when I can. And uh, it, it, like I said before, it's just a good break from footy. Mentally, you're just not really thinking about anything when you're out paddling the waves. And, um, you know, it's a good feeling. Here he is in jersey number 22, Tay McDermott, a debutant in the green and gold tonight. Yeah, my Wallabies journey was was pretty soon actually, which was um, which was awesome. It obviously wasn't something I expected. Um, you know, I was probably, 2020 was, was my cap year. Um, first test against the All Blacks in, in Sydney. To not have my family at the debut match was, was tough, but a week later when I was uh, at the home ground at Suncorp Stadium there, and, and to see my family after we just beat the Kiwis was, was something I'll never forget. And Tate McDermott, like a good number nine, looming up in support, clinical from the Australians. We obviously had a pretty uh, interesting series against France, um, which was which was a highlight as well. I got my first uh, start for the Wallabies in the, in those Test matches. Um, in the third one, uh, we end up winning with 14 men. So to this day, it's still probably my you know favourite Test match I've played in. It was a sensational night, and um, you know we ended up winning with 14 men. So it was uh, it was it was, it was pretty good. Um, so I got my first meat pie, which was um, which was pretty special uh, in front of the home fans there. So I tried to do. a pretty special dive and actually hurt my back quite a bit so um, straight away I was what the hell did I do that for but um, yeah spur of the moment I was I was obviously pretty happy over the moon I think I kicked the ball into the crowd and yeah that's how it went. Tate McDermott flew in blonde here for the Bjorn Borg. I used to have um, I like to think it was like Chris Hemsworth there like real long 
um, looked pretty good, but Thorny got the job as Reds head coach and obviously those who know Thorny probably is not the best uh, mixture, so I had to cut it and I, I think the best thing for me at the time was to get a bowl cut. From there the bowl kind of, I guess, grew out of favour a little bit and I moved towards the mullet, which everyone was kind of doing throughout, um, you know, quarantine and, and COVID and stuff like that. And just recently I've probably had a bit of an intervention from my, uh, my partner and my my mother where they're just sick of looking at it. I probably didn't look after it as best as I could and I think disgraceful was used to describe my mullet but I've probably copped my hair my whole life. Um, you know, I remember my first game in South Africa, there's someone tweeted like, this is the worst haircut I've ever seen. So from there, like, I've, got, I've got pretty thick skin about it. I don't, I don't really care. Like, there's some pretty rancid chat wherever you go. So um, for me, I, I don't get too worried about it. I'd probably say Sydney, classic, just Queensland, New South Wales, or whatever. If you've got a little bit to give them, that they take the whole thing and I just laugh at them. Some of them were pretty funny, some of them were just, come on mate, you're kidding yourself. And the Wallabies are the first team in history to qualify for three Rugby World Cup finals. To be included in the World Cup squad would, would be sensational. It'd be, you know, the, it's the pinnacle of our game. Been a fan my whole life, 2015, uh, 2011, all, all those recent ones where you see guys um, wearing that gold jersey and, and wearing it with pride and just to see how the nation gets behind you when, when you're in tournaments like that. We've got a golden runway and a good opportunity leading into a home World Cup where we, if we have a good World Cup, um, we can set up this sport for the next couple of years. So we've got a taste of what French rugby can do this year and the crowds will be phenomenal. For me individually, it's about my family and you know, how I can make an impact at, at that scene for my own name, but also my family name. So they'll be there loving it, um, just soaking up the atmosphere of a World Cup. It'll be their first one. Um, obviously, it'd be my first one if I was to go, but I'm just really excited. We've got an awesome group here. It's going to be a massive challenge. There's no doubts about that. But, um, you know, if I did get the opportunity, it would definitely be the whole lot of my career.